Hi, my name is Ed Rudiger and I'm pastor here at Code Presbyterian Church. I'm so glad you caught our prayer line. Before we have a word of prayer, though, I'd like to share with you some scripture and a devotion I wrote. The scripture passage comes from the third chapter of Titus. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid all quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we may become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This saying is sure. I desire that you insist on these things, so that those who have come to believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable to everyone. But avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. After a second and third admonition, have nothing more to do with anyone who causes division, since you know that such a person is perverted and sinful, being self-condemned. And here's a devotion that I entitled, But What If? You know, Paul seems clear in what he wrote to Titus. Not only should we be subject and obedient to the authorities, we must avoid quarreling, be gentle, and show courtesy to everyone. Now, that's what he wrote, and in a perfect world, that would seem fairly easy to do. I mean, if authorities treat us with respect, we can certainly do the same. And if they display goodness and loving kindness, the goodness and loving kindness of God, I think being subject to their authority becomes a whole lot easier. And if our rulers work together toward unity instead of picking foolish and worthless fights, then it would appear reasonable for us to give their leadership a chance, right? But what if that's not the case? I mean, what if those who have authority over us call one another evil and, and foolish names, are harsh in dealing with criticism and seem to love arguing? And what if goodness seems to run second to self-interest and kindness appears to be nowhere in sight? And what if our rulers seek to divide and stir up controversies as a way to maintain and expand their power? In these cases, what are we expected to do? Now that's a tough one. But I'll tell you, that doesn't excuse us from the attitude Paul challenged Titus to show as he dealt with the pagan authorities of his day. I mean, neither our subjection nor obedience should be blind. That would be foolish. Because we've been called to stand up for the truth despite the opposition. And as we take our stand, we can do it without hatred. Rather, we can speak out with mercy and kindness and, and love. And if we do, I think we'll discover something that's truly remarkable. A kind and loving approach will be far more effective than abandoning the gospel when confronting evil. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, be with the caller. Give him comfort and support and hope. In the name of Christ, amen. I'm so glad you called. I'd love to visit with you. If you're ever in the neighborhood, that's 3404 Main Street here in Wharton. Come on by Cove and we'll have a visit. Of course, if you're around here Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, we love to see you in worship. And so until I talk with you again, I want you to remember, you're a child of God, and God loves you very much. Goodbye.